All right, thank you guys. We are now 5-0 and in our last five extra daily picks on BrockPage.com. And $1,000 bettors are now up over $4,500 during that stretch. Now, if you want to join those guys and access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. And the link for that package is in the description section below. We're also 2-0 and in our last couple of board member tier package picks on that very same website. And just remember, guys, board members get access to every single bet that I give out on that webpage all the way through the end of February. And the link for both of those packages that I just mentioned is in the description section below. And with that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into some free content. It's going to be the Celtics versus the Pistons. And that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off on Friday, February 4th, 2022. Happy Friday to you. The weekend is finally here. Hopefully you have some great plans here on a Friday night. Now, Boston's minus 8 in this contest here. Totals 213.5. The Celtics are on a three-game winning streak. And they also got the W in seven out of their last ten. Now, Boston has played exceptional defensively this season. They're in the top three in defensive field goal percentage, and they're allowing only 104 points per contest. Now, when it comes to scoring, Jason Tatum, he's averaging over 25.5 points a game, along with eight boards and four assists. Meanwhile, Jalen Brown, he's scoring over 24 points a game himself, along with six boards and three assists as well. And speaking of boards, the Celtics are currently in the top three in the NBA in offensive rebounding per game on the road. They're taking on a Detroit squad who lost eight out of their last 10 themselves, and they actually ranked dead last in shooting from the field at home. Matter of fact, Detroit's averaging only 102 points per contest on the offensive end of the court. And when it comes to the injury report in this one, Jackson, Cunningham, and Pickett, they're all listed as questionable for Detroit. And when it comes to the total on this one, the Pistons saw unders recently with New Orleans, Denver, and Utah. Meanwhile, the Celtics on the other side of things, they're 60% to the under this year when they travel. I'm going to lean toward Boston, minus 8, and the under, 213.5. Next ball game, it is going to be Bulls versus the Pacers, 7 p.m. Eastern tip-off. Chicago's minus 2.5 with a total at 231. Now, the Bulls got the W in three out of their last four ball games, and they also went 6-3 and three against the spread in their last nine. Chicago is currently leading the entire NBA in shooting the three ball. DeMar DeRozan, he's scoring 26 points a game, along with five rebounds and in, in, uh, five assists. Meanwhile, Nick Vucevic, he's scoring over 17 points a game himself, along with 11 and a half big rebounds. Chicago is currently in the top three in offensive field goal percentage. And they're also leading the NBA in shooting from the stripe on the road. They're taking on a Pacer team who has a losing record at home this year. And they also find themselves 15 games below 500. Now, the Pacers are currently in the bottom three in defensive field goal percentage at home. And they're allowing 112 points a night at the Gamebridge Fieldhouse. These guys are really struggling defensively at home. Now, when it comes to the injury report, uh, Indiana's top scorers, they're also sitting this one out here tonight. Brogdon and Sabonis, they're both out. Batazzi and Brissett, they're also listed as questionable. Meanwhile, for Chicago on the other side of things, Zach Levine's a little banged up for these guys as well. So uh, watch, you know, be on the lookout for his status by tip-off. He hasn't been ruled out. He's officially questionable. So he could play here tonight. Just keep an eye on uh, Levine. Now, total-wise, the Bulls did see their last four straight all get over the posted number. Chicago's also 70% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Indiana's 17-10 and 10 to the over as the official home team. I'm going to lean toward Chicago, minus 2.5. And the over, 231. Next ball game. It is going to be Cavaliers versus the Hornets. 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Charlotte's minus 4.5. Totals 219. And despite their recent skid, the Hornets are still 14-8 and eight straight up at home. And they covered the point spread in nearly 70% of those home games. Now, the Hornets also average more points per contest than any other team in the NBA. And they're also in the top five in shooting the three ball. 
Miles Bridges is scoring nearly 20 points a game, along with seven boards and three assists. Meanwhile, LaMelo Ball, he's dropping 19 points a game himself, along with seven rebounds and seven assists as well. Now, when it comes to rebounding in this one, the Hornets are actually in the top 10 in home offensive boards. They're taking on a Cleveland squad who failed to cover in six out of their last seven. And they're actually going to work here today without their leading scorer, Darius Garland. So uh, we got their top scorer out. They really struggled against the number here recently. And I'll tell you this much, even when they're mostly healthy, I, I wouldn't really describe Cleveland as uh, offensive juggernauts. Uh, they're scoring just 106 points a game. And they also rank in the bottom 10 in the league in offensive points per contest. Now, when it comes to the injury report in this one, uh, once again, Garland is out. Marketing is also still out and definitely as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, not only is our uh, top scorer out, but Laurie Marketing, he's still out and definitely. We haven't seen him uh, in a handful of games. Meanwhile, for Charlotte on the other side of things, McDaniels is out. Hayward is questionable. And when it comes to the number in this one, Charlotte went 6-3 and three to the under in their last nine ball games. Unders against the likes of Boston, Atlanta, and the Clippers. Meanwhile, Cleveland saw five out of their last eight fall under the line as well. I'm going to lean toward Charlotte, minus four and a half in the under, 219. Next matchup, it is going to be Atlanta versus Toronto, 7.30 p.m. East. Toronto's minus two with the total at 216. Now, the Raptors are on a four-game winning streak, and they also went seven and two against the spread in their last nine. Now, Toronto's been one of the tougher teams in the East to score points on. They're actually allowing only 105 points a game in the Scotiabank Arena. When it comes to the scoring, Freddie Van Fleet, he's averaging 21.5 points a game, along with four boards and seven assists. Now, Freddie's also drilling nearly 40% of his three-pointers. He's been very good from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Pascal Siakam, he's averaging over 21 points a game himself, along with eight rebounds and five assists. Now, when it comes to head-to-head -to -head meetings in this one, Toronto got the W in seven out of their last 10 contests against Atlanta. And speaking of the Hawks, they may be going to work here tonight without Lou Williams and John Collins. And when it comes to their road games, well, the Hawks got the W in just 10 out of 24 contests away from their home court. Now, the Hawks are allowing nearly 113 points a game when they travel. And they're currently in the bottom 10 in road defensive field goal percentage. That's really been kind of the Achilles heel. These guys have struggled defensively uh, on the road. Now, total-wise, Atlanta went 60% to the over in their last 10 ball games. They also went 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with the Raptors. So if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. Meanwhile, Toronto 17-10 and 10 to the over at the Scotiabank Arena. Give me Toronto, minus two, and the over, 216 and a half. Next game, Rockets, Spurs, 8.30 Eastern tip-off. San Antonio's minus three and a half, totals 234. And although the Spurs lost their last three straight, they certainly score a lot of points at home. They're currently in the top 10 in home three-point shooting, and they're averaging 114 points a night at the AT&T Center. Keldon Johnson averages over 15 points a game, along with six rebounds. Meanwhile, Derek White, he's scoring over 14 points a game himself, along with three rebounds and five assists. Now, San Antonio is currently in the top 10 in offensive field goal percentage at home. They're taking on a Houston team who lost four out of their last five, and they win only 25% of their road games. Now, the Rockets allow more points per contest than any other team in the NBA, they're also dead last in defensive field goal percentage. When it comes to the injury report, Garuba is out for the Rockets. Meanwhile, for San Antonio, Murray, Pirtle, McDermott, Collins, and Landale, and Bates Diop, uh, they're all listed as questionable for them. When it comes to the scoring in this one, Houston saw three out of their last four ball games get over the line. Meanwhile, San Antonio is four and three to the over in their last seven themselves. 68% to the over at the AT&T Center. Plenty of overs in front of their home crowd. I'm going to lean towards San Antonio, minus three and a half, and the over, 234. Next contest, it is going to be Nets versus the Jazz, 9 p.m. Eastern tip-off. Utah's minus four and a half, totals 230. And although the Jazz are favored by a couple of buckets at home here, 
They lost seven out of their last nine ball games, and they successfully covered the point spread only once during that span. Now, when it comes to covering the point spread, Utah has covered the number in only eight out of 26 home games this year. They're taking on a Brooklyn squad who still plays their best basketball on the road, despite their recent struggles. I know that uh, these guys really have not done a great job getting the W over the past couple of weeks, but uh, they're still good on the road. They still have good numbers on the road, and uh, they can certainly turn it around here tonight. Uh, Brooklyn 17-9 and nine straight up when they travel, and they're actually leading the league and shooting the three ball on the road. Now Kyrie Irving, he only plays in road games, and he's dropping over 23.5 points a game, four rebounds, four assists for Kyrie. Meanwhile, James Harden, he's scoring 22.5 points a game himself, along with eight boards and double-digit assists. Now, Brooklyn's currently first in the NBA in offensive field goal percentage on the road. Meanwhile, defensively, the Nets are currently leading the league in guarding the three ball away from home as well. Now, injury-wise, Aldridge, Millsap, Harris, and Durant, they're all still out indefinitely. Meanwhile, for Utah, Whiteside, Clarkson, and Mitchell, they are listed as out for them. When it comes to the total in this one, Utah saw overs recently with the likes of Minnesota and Memphis. They're also 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Brooklyn. Meanwhile, the Nets saw overs recently with the likes of Phoenix, Denver, and Minnesota themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Brooklyn plus four and a half and the over 230. All right, <clears throat> next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Pelicans versus the Nuggets. 9 o'clock Eastern start time. Denver is minus 6, totals 224.5. Now, the Nuggets covered the point spread in four out of their last five ball games, and they also went 6-3 and three straight up in their last nine. So, nice little mix of straight up wins and covers. The Nuggets are currently in the top five in the NBA in offensive field goal percentage. And they're led by Nikola Jokic, who's scoring over 25.5 points a game, along with 13 rebounds. Meanwhile, Will Barton scoring 15 points a game himself, along with four boards and four assists. When it comes to uh, the rebounding in this game, the Nuggets are currently in the top 10 in defensive boards per contest, and they've also done a real nice job guarding the three ball. Now, they're taking on a Pelicans team who lost four out of their last five themselves, and they're actually winning just 29% of their road games. These guys have been really bad when traveling this year. Uh, the Pels have really struggled scoring away from home. Uh, they're averaging only 102 points a game when traveling. And in addition to that, they're making only 32% of their three-pointers in that same category. So these guys have been little threat shooting the long ball. Now, when it comes to the injury report, Temple, Hernan Gomez, and Silva, they are out. Hart is questionable. Meanwhile, for Denver on the other side of things, Murray and Cancer are still out and definitely for them. Cousins is also listed as questionable when it comes to the total in this one. Denver saw unders recently with Utah, Detroit, and this very New Orleans team. The Nuggets also saw eight out of their last 10 meetings with the Pels fall under the posted number as well. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around uh, when these two teams get together. Now, New Orleans on the other side of things, they are currently 17 and 10 to the under in their road games themselves. I'm going to lean toward Denver, minus six, in the under, 224 and a half. Next ball game, it is going to be Thunder versus the Blazers, 10 o'clock Eastern start time. Portland is minus eight with a total at 212 and a half. And although the Blazers still do have a winning record at home, they currently find themselves on a three-game losing streak, and they also took the loss in five out of their last six. Now, the Blazers are currently in the bottom 10 in shooting from the field, and they're also having a pretty tough time uh, grabbing offensive rebounds. Now, defensively on the other end of the court, they're also allowing nearly 112 points a game at the Moda Center. And they're also in the bottom three in guarding the three ball at home. So uh, plenty of concerns to go around here for Portland. Uh, I know they're taking on a, a Thunder team who's not been great. But just keep in mind, OKC is on a two-game winning streak right now. And they have consistently covered the point spread this year on the road. Not a lot of people talking about that. I get it. OKC's bad. They got some guys out. But these guys have consistently covered the number when traveling. OKC's 16-9 against the spread 
uh, away from their home court this season. And that's actually good for 64% in that particular category. Uh, a lot of cashed tickets if you're backing OKC uh, on the road. Now, Lou Dort is averaging over 16.5 points a game along with four rebounds. Meanwhile, Josh Giddy is scoring nearly a dozen points a game himself, along with seven boards and six assists. Now, OKC is currently in the top five in the entire NBA in offensive rebounding. Meanwhile, on the other end of the court, defensively, they've actually done a real nice job guarding the field goal on the road. Now, injury-wise, of course, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, he's still out for OKC. I'm fully aware of that. Roby Wiggins and Robinson Earl, they're out as well. Meanwhile, for Portland, Nance and Watford are questionable for them. When it comes to the total in this one, three out of OKC's last four ball games did get over the posted number. Meanwhile, Portland saw overs recently with Chicago, Houston, and Dallas. I'm going to lean toward OKC plus eight. And the over, 212 and a half. With that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup of the show. It is going to be Sixers versus the Mavericks. That's going to be a 10 o'clock Eastern start time. Dallas is minus two with the total at 210 and a half. But despite being favored in this one, Dallas lost their last two straight. And they're also amongst the worst in the Western Conference in home scoring. The Mavs are averaging only 106 points a game at the American Airlines Center. They also find themselves in the bottom 10 in shooting the three ball. Now they're taking on a Sixers team who's in the top 10 in guarding the three ball on the road themselves. And they're also allowing only 105 points a game. These guys have played uh, very good defensively this season. Now scoring-wise, Joel Embiid, he's averaging nearly 30 points a game along with double-digit rebounds. He's been absolutely dominant this year. Meanwhile, Tyrese Maxey, he's drilling nearly 41% of his three-pointers. He's also scoring over 16 points a game. Now, Philly's done a real nice job shooting the basketball. They're currently in the top 10 in offensive field goal percentage away from home. When it comes to the injury report in this one, Porzingis, I'm sorry, uh, Korkmaz is out. Curry is questionable. Meanwhile, for Dallas on the other side of things, Porzingis, Brown, and Hardaway, they're all out. Not going to see them in action tonight. Now, total-wise, the Mavs are 20-6 and six to the under in front of their home fans. They also saw six out of their last 10 against Philadelphia fall under the post number. Meanwhile, the Sixers went 60% to the under in their last 10 ball games themselves. I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia plus two and the under 210 and a half. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap powered to you by my website at brockpage.com. Where we are currently 5-0 and in our last five extra daily picks on that website. I like Boston minus eight under 213 and a half. Chicago Bulls minus two and a half over 231. Charlotte Hornets minus four and a half under 219. Toronto minus two over 216. San Antonio minus three and a half over 234. Brooklyn Nets plus four and a half over 230. Denver Nuggets minus six under 224 and a half. Oklahoma City Thunder, plus eight over 212 and a hook. And for my next and final free pick for the video, I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia, plus two, and the under, 210 and a half. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on brockpage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on BrockPage.com, you're actually going to get access to those picks all the way through the end of February. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And I'll tell you what, it's February 4th. It's payday. Uh, doesn't get much earlier than that. It's a good day to sign up. Now, if you guys uh, want to get access to every single pick that I give out on that website, you're also going to want to think about uh, signing up for my board member tier pick. Not only do board members get access to my board member tier pick itself, uh, board members also get access to every single pick that I give out on that website. It is an all-inclusive package. Uh, but most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.